Okay, there's so much more to talk about with the rules of uh, scope and uh, functions. But I want to show you one more thing here, then we're going to take a break from functions here. So in this lesson, we're going to learn about function prototypes. So we already have the algorithm for prime numbers written, and we have a an algorithm for uh, writing random numbers. Okay, so um, in the previous lesson we learned that we can save a lot of time calling functions here, uh, such as the prime number function here. Well, when we call this function here, we do not have to worry about any of the variables that was written up here. We don't, these variables won't, like this a here won't exist, the n won't exist, because those are just separate here. Basically, all we know about the prime number function is that it, it's going to work here. We had to trust it, and it's going to work here. So when you use other people's functions that they've written, when you're working on a team or whatever, you know, you're going to just have to trust that they work. And so then this will save us a lot of time. We don't have to worry about any other variables. We don't have to worry about all that code. Because all we see is that this will just tell you if it's true or false based on if the number's prime or not. And we can... So this is just another tool that we made ourselves added to our toolbox. And um, it really simplifies a lot of work. We can, we can use them together here. Now since this also takes in an int value here, we can also use the random, random function if we wanted to and we can say from 7 to you know 13 here wait we can say prime here let's try this again we can say random 7 comma 13 and this would also work here well assume if i'm using my my function here we can output, we can call a function inside a function here. We can, this wouldn't be, this would be kind of silly, but we can do this and it would, the program would still compile. And it wouldn't do anything, it won't print anything up to the screen, but it'll still compile. It'll tell you if that random number is going to be prime or not. So we can call functions inside functions here. And uh, we, we can use all these things here once we've, we've already written a long piece of code. And generally, we want to try to keep our functions really simple here. That way, it'll we can at least eliminate most of the bugs here, based on functions, and we're going to try to keep um, the integer function, the main function, as small as possible, knowing that, you know, knowing that, um, well, we haven't really gone over too many functions yet, but we can have a, a lot of things, but just try to keep this as small as possible here. That way, if we tried to write the random prime numbers algorithm without any uh, functions here. We would have all kinds of problems. We would have quite a few variables that we try to keep track of all at once here. And with uh, two different variables here, we we only needed what one variable, maybe two. So <sighs> that's what I have on functions here. Now let's get to the function prototypes here. So I'm going to delete everything up here. Now let's say I call this prime prime function here. You know, it'll just output a one or a zero here, and it should output a one because seven's a prime number, and it does here. Now let's go over what is a prototype here. I want to copy all this here. I'm going to copy that whole entire code here, and then I want to put it below the main function here. If I do that, the compiler will have a problem here. So let's go ahead and try to do this here. It says the prime identifier was not found. Basically, the compiler does not know that prime exists. Why? Because uh, as um, the compiler scans through each piece of code, it never sees the function called prime. It does not exist because it it's below the main function here. It does not come into play yet. The compiler hasn't seen this yet at the time this is called. So what do we do? 
we are going to make a prototype. And uh, to keep things as straightforward as possible, the prototype looks exactly like this here. We, we just uh, retype the definition of our function here. But the only thing that we add is a semicolon. Now the compiler will be able to read our function here. So basically, this does not require the definition, and it, can, it has to go above the main function so it knows that it exists here. So let me go ahead and uh, copy this one here. And not much is different. It, it just everything's below here. And um, we have to make prototypes here so the compiler understands what we're talking about when we call certain functions here. So that's basically what the prototype is. So what's the advantage of a prototype here? When you when you look at formal code here, we'll see these comments here. A lot of things um, will be commented here. With And a comment is two forward slashes here. So we can say this out puts true or false. We can just make our comments. We can kind of take our notes here. This pauses the program. You know, and this we can also use a comment that says this terminates. We just basically take our notes here. Now the compiler will not read any of the text that's written in green because those are our comments here. So we can comment things out here. Basically, we can comment our entire line of code out. So I can co I can comment out this pause here, and the compiler will not read any of the text that's written in green because all our text, all our uh, text that lights up in green <coughs> from the comment is not going to be read by the compiler when we press compile here. So what is the advantage of using prototypes here? Basically when we have a, a lot of functions here we can write these blocks of code here. Now just before I before I finish that up here to show you that um, I can use um, comment blocks here. Basically, if I make a, a forward slash and a star here, everything below that is going to be a comment until it runs across the uh, closing code block here. So it's almost like an open and close in parenthesis here. And every, notice how this piece here is in green. It's going to be commented out. The compiler will skip right over that. It does not read anything that's in green. So uh, basically, what's the point of a prototype? Well, in this block, in this little comment block here, we can basically write our notes here. Now, there's there is um, standard procedures of how to write formal comments here, but just to keep things simple here, we'll just tell it what it does. This outputs a random random number between the min and the max. And we can also say equal to or between the min and the max. And I uh, need to also say that um, we can also make a comment here that says this tells you if n is prime or not. So that's, we can kind of take our notes here and we can tell the user what these are going to do here. So that way if I'm going to write code here, and or if I'm writing someone else's code, if I'm if somebody wrote a function here, and I'm going to use their functions that w for whatever reason, I can look at their function and if you're reading their comments here, I can um, figure out what their why they wrote that function or what it actually does instead of trying to figure out what it does from this definition here, because the definition is written below. Now this is I'm calling this everything inside here the definition of the prime function which is basically our our actual executable code. But these are just comments here that tells us what it does in general. And it should be pretty uh clear. It shouldn't be it shouldn't be too shifty. It shouldn't <clears throat> you should try to stay more than this here. Like for instance if I press enter here and say note max must be 
greater than min or or um it will crash so that's kind of important here right so I gotta say okay if if I put in a negative seven here you know and this is um negative six well that's not good because right here inside here this will become a zero here or less and the compiler will crash <clears throat> instead of me trying to go and read all this code here if this was a lot of code here and me trying to figure that out <clears throat> I'll have a reminder or in an if if someone else were to sit down and read this here they'll say okay you know I won't do that and then that's the advantage of a prototype so you can kind of take your own notes here it's not that you couldn't do it anyway <clears throat> I mean you can take your notes we could have put our comments just way down here I mean we can do whatever we want because we're you know we're programmers but the advantage is and you'll see this that they will they will use this here you'll basically see just the prototype here and and, and you'll see this here and everything's in comments here you might see a couple lines of comments here that tells you what it does and what you can do and what you can't do with it and then right here like if I were to say here um, I can say a small note here it's not as important that um, n must be greater than 1 greater than or equal to 1 or just something like that. I can also use this guy here n must be and I can also do this here just use math definitions whatever the one for it to work right now regardless of what the code is here you know we shouldn't have to look at this here ever again unless we want to try to make it faster here unless or maybe there is something wrong with this algorithm here then we want to try to fix it here but we're just going to use these as components here and we call our functions here because and we can try to make our two or three other functions work together like the prime numbers and the random numbers here we can we got them to work together in the last code here but this is just a prototype here this nothing really changes here <coughs> and um, and um, that's what we got on prototypes here now just to wrap this up here when I uh, when I look at some code that um other code here I see I usually see the main function I see I see these here I'll see the prototypes here with the uh, just a with just a small definition here an abstract definition here you know it's just everything the abstract definitions and comments here and then um the formal definitions right below it which is actually the concrete executable code here but really we're only going to look at the there's a formal definition of how they want you to comment it so you can tell it what it's supposed to do but I'm not going to go over the formal definition here just keep in mind that you can use prototypes and you can use comments here now you should be commenting all your code here I don't and I should be but um, that gets annoying sometimes and I should have been commenting on all my code throughout these tutorials here but okay so you can comment whenever you want here <coughs> But I still, actually, I do recommend that you comment the, the functions. That way you can get a pretty good idea here. And these comments might help you to figure out what's exactly going on, what exactly is going on in the, inside, the, uh, inside this function here. So that wraps it up. Now we're going to be going over some libraries in the next videos to take a break from functions here but they'll come back and then we're <coughs> gonna go over something new after we go over a little bit more on